Previously on the internet. It's already a cult hit bordering on becoming a masterpiece. Oh, yeah. I, oh, Nobody's yeah. talking about this movie. I look forward to the dub talk episode. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to get to sign up for that? <clears throat> I'm not going to lie. If it ends up dubbed on Crunchyroll or something, I will probably watch it. <laughs> Before the pandemic hit, I barely knew anything about Sound Cadence stuff, honestly. Like, Sound Cadence but now convinced it's just like, people to watch the bug anime. That in itself is fucking <laughs> impressive. <laughs> I'm still waiting for that Kickstarter to come in this week, but uh Oh, you're getting it this week? Shit, alright. <sighs> Y'all just like watching a squirm, don't you? Just remember, you get what you asked for. Warning, the Dub Talk podcast contains language and content that is not suitable for younger audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. There will be spoilers for the Island of Giant Insects, as well as any other anime that may occur, so be very careful if there's a series you haven't listened to yet. You didn't ask for this, but we covered it anyway. Well, maybe you do a list ask, but, uh... Anyway, the views and opinions expressed are those of the individuals in tonight's episode and do not reflect the Dub Talk podcast as a whole. Now, watch what happens when Lord of the Flies is reimagined as a hentai centered around high schoolers who come under attack by these kaiju sized bugs. I mean, there's some big motherfuckers, y'all. <laughs> y'all squirming yet? Good. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello, listeners, and welcome to another episode of Dub Talk. Wait, hold on. Uh, wait, let me check my notes. I'm sorry. Welcome to hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, folks. We're covering a movie that I'm not going to say no one asked us to cover, but I'm not sure. Let's find out. <laughs> Maybe you did. In which case, you have picked the right episode to join in on our podcast. Because uh, tonight we have, a, we have a doozy of an episode for you. Uh, let's, 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 let's ask my, 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 uh, my co-conspirators here. Megan, what, what, what do you think? I don't know. I'm are just, you, you... I'm just happy to be here with my fellow cultured whore biscuits. <laughs> As am I. Uh, Hardy, how, how are you feeling? <sighs> you could say that I'm a buzz with excitement. I don't know, Hardy, you sound a little antsy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> J- J- Jamal, how are you? How are you on this fine evening? Man, get the term "get fucked" has never been more apt until tonight. I can't say you're wrong, uh, because tonight, dear dear listeners, if the if the puns had not tipped you off, we are covering the oh so infamous anime movie, "The Island of Giant Insects." Oh, what are you talking about? It's be lightful. <laughs> Don't be such a tick, I'm on. Oh, yeah, I picked the right crew for this one. All right. It, I picked. Anyways. Uh, yes, that's right. We're covering the the, the dub for Island of Giant Eggs text, uh, funded by Kickstarter and by some of us, for that matter, among other people, uh, to uh, to help uh, take this movie and, uh, you know, Give it a give it a little more pizzazz, if you will. But what is what is this movie about? Emphasis well, on according to <laughs> according from from description description on Country Roll, students from Hoshio Academy High School were aboard a plane when it crashed when a crash lands under mysterious circumstances. The heroine Arive Mitsumi and her classmates wash ashore on an island. The surviving passengers decide to wait for help to come, but the island turns out to be inhabited by giant insects. Matsumi wakes up on a beach and finds her classmate Matsu Ayumi. They use their wits to procure food, believing that help will come in three days they decide to endure until then. Will they? Well, I've seen a lot of movies like this, and the answer is maybe, but only some of them. Yeah. This Probably is... not, but we'll hope for the best. This yeah. is what yeah. happens when you decide to think that the edible ain't shit, and you find <laughs> your way to the dark part of Faku. Yep. 
this I'm, I'm having a flashback. I went I went to a panel to com once that was supposed to be like you know, it, it, was, it was sort of a comedy panel where they showed just you know sort of weird stuff from hentai, and they had one that it's like I'm not sure this is hentai. I think this just might be a weird horror manga that's got a lot of nudity in it. I'm not sure this is attractive to anybody. See, when I went to the weird hentai panel at the con, it was called Dub That Hentai, and there was a guy in a fursuit with squeakers in it, and every time somebody moaned or thrust, he would squeak it. <laughs> See, that sounds more fun than the one I went to. No, it was every time somebody would thrust, he would squeak his, uh, he would squeak the squeaker. No, that's good comedy. <laughs> I can appreciate that. Just like, oh, eek! Squeaky, squeaky. Squeaky, squeaky. Sir, I think you need, uh, some, uh... WD-40 and lube? <laughs> what? <laughs> Can't they be the same thing? <laughs> no, WD-40 is compressed air, Jamal. Uh, that's why, that's why, uh, what? somebody says if you ever want to make Mufasa come to life, get a, a can of WD-40 and a, and a microphone. If it's compressed air, why does it come out of, uh, no, never mind. Anyways. You know what, now I have to Google what WD-40 is. I think I mean I think it is a lubricant. There's like yeah, because it's supposed to displace the joke, water from us. But anyway, the jo the joke is like if it if it doesn't move and it's supposed to you use WD forty on yeah. it, like Mufasa. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, <laughs> now that now that I've explained the joke, uh, let's let's get right into this show, movie. Should we let's crawl right, right in? I mean, I mean, I don't feel like there's any other way we're going to enter this one. It's it's a time, folks. Uh, let us. Let's discuss this dub, uh, produced by the lovely people at Soundcaden Studio, uh, and let's talk about our, our staff on this. Uh, uh, directing and, uh, doing script supervisor, directing and doing script supervision on this movie, we have Marissa Lenti, uh, who, uh, you would know for just a lot of things, uh, because she's great, but, uh, in particular she has done, uh, directing and writing, uh, duty on shows such as Beat X, Actors Songs Connection, and Kimono Friends. Uh, Megan, would you like to start us off? Uh, sure. Uh, these bugs are more like Kimono Fuck Buddies <laughs> than, um, friends. Uh, they only want you... Well, I, I don't know. Vor... Yeah, Vor is a sexual fetish. Um... For better or for worse. Unfortunately. <laughs> in sickness and in health. Till death do them part. <laughs> I, giant, well, I, giant butterfly, do take you, girl from hiking club who pisses outside, as my lawfully eternal wife, to have and to hold, to vor and to suck, in sickness and in pissing yourself. Till death does sit up in the ass. <laughs> till, till I stick this, stick my little t tonguey thing in your body and suck. Amen. I believe the technical term is proboscis. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so, if you haven't guessed by the tone of this episode, we're all going to hell. Yep. Um, so I think that this is not a thing I ever wanted to watch. And I'll, let's be real, I kickstarted this because of the dub preview clip. Because nothing, nothing's, nothing attunes to my forced to move to the south ass than something making fun of jorts. <laughs> jorts McGee. Jorts McGee. You know, the bastard child of shorts and denim. Um. So no, the dub of this is really funny. It is... I don't want to say it's ghost stories level because I think that this actually retains the tone of the seer... the tone of the thing. It's just yeah. punched up. Um... I think that the casting in this is really fun. I even think that the people who uh, kickstarted their way into being in this sounded pretty good. Um, mm. I think if there's only one thing I had an issue with is that um, even in comedy doves, even if people were throwing around the terms, and pardon my French, like cunt, piss, bitch, fuck, shit, like all that stuff, um, I think I did hear the R word what? Oh, I slipped in. I, w I wanted to ask you about this because I I I, th I thought I missed it and I tried to find it where you had said it was. Same. It's uh, uh, I think he says this place has no internet. I guess I have to do this like an R word leper. Oh no, he said Victor. I think he said Victorian. Yeah, like a Victorian leper. 
Okay, I misheard that then, because I thought it sounded like the R word. Okay, because I thought the R word you meant was Sebastian. I'm like, that's not that No, bad, the other buddy. one. Well, that, that's that's good, because if, if that had been there, that'd be the only reservation I'd have, because it's, it's 2021. We shouldn't be using that. Anymore. Yeah, that was my only reservation. Other than that, this shit was hilarious. Like, this has some of my favorite one-liners, like, um, uh, Cultured Whore Biscuit was one. Um, it's a city hospital. I mean, it's still dirty, but at least we'd be safe. Um, if you die, I'm not going to fuck you is a good one. <laughs> um... <laughs> I haven't had this much shit on my face since my ex got into scat. <laughs> uh, there are just just so many good one-liners. Um, just, just. I'm sorry when the one the hot girl gets the dumb the dumb thug guy to have sex is one of my favorite moments. It's like, hey, you want to ditch these losers and play hide the sausage? Oh, I why did that? She said that. Like. I'll have my words on that when we get to those characters, but overall, this is a really fun watch. Like, I this better be our new drunk at a con watch. Oh yeah. Like this yeah. is this is that thing you get really shit faced at the con. Like, you get super shit faced at the con, um, and then you all sit together and go, "Man, I'm fucking bored. I'm drunk. We can't go back." Like, we can't go back out to the con because if we do, someone's going to either shit on the floor or we're going to end up in an 18 plus panel and embarrass ourselves. What do we want to do? I don't know. Grab a copy, grab Hardy's copy of Mad Bull 34 and let's go. Yeah. This yeah. is what this is. This is what this dub is. It is, it is a well crafted, it is the world's most well crafted shit post. <laughs> and I say that as a contra. As a connoisseur of shit posts, like I have one waiting for fruits basket that is going to send me so far into the seven layers of hell, I'm gonna come out the other side of the abyss and say hi to Reg and Rico. <laughs> anyway, I'm done. Uh, Jamal, you wanna go next? Yeah, sure. So uh, I have a confession to make. Like most mm -hmm. other people, I to this is something i definitely wouldn't have watched either if it wasn't for the dub as a matter of fact when i was talking with some people about it i pretty much kind of lambasted it but then when i found out sound k this was behind the dub i said you know what let me back it i mean how bad could it be so today i'm here before you eating some humble pie and say this is actually pretty good it, it wasn't as bad as i thought i was like Expected more body, body, uh, body mutilation horror than was, yeah, act, I've was read, actually I've, happening. I've read worse hentai. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I've read worse Dojin. As, as someone who watches movies like this for fun, I have to admit this is surprisingly tame. Yeah, like, I've seen I've seen way worse. I even spoiled myself <laughs> on TV tropes to to like I don't know. But yeah, it wasn't it wasn't as bad as people thought. I mean. It was, it was actually pretty good. The dub made it even better. Granted, the horror movies are not my thing, but uh, I, I, w I would say I have to give Mr. Props for what she did because the way the the way the dub and the script came off and everything is like it's one of those situations when you think something was not out of place, but it actually fits the tone of the show very well. I just wish people would stop giving this crap before, you know, ju don't judge a book by its cover, I mean. I mean, to be fair, there's a lot of really creepy sh triggering shit in this, and if you're not ready for it, and you just want to mm. watch the dub because you think the dub is funny, you're do you're not doing yourself favors. I know, but I <laughs> it's funny because uh, we talked about this being a Kickstarter dub. We never mentioned that it was a, a direct dub, actually. It was done by the was by the Japanese company itself, to the point that uh, when a certain uh, review site kind of that bastard, they, they called him out on Twitter. I was like, God damn! <laughs> I'd never seen a call out that hard since the, my first girlfriend's character. But that's not, not that's neither here nor there. I do think Tom Cage definitely took a chance on this and. 
it paid off very well. And I look forward to see what they bring to the table even more now. And that's all I have to say for right now. All right. Uh, Hardy, would you like to go? Let me just be the first to say Sound Cadence knew exactly what they were getting themselves into. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because I believe the Japanese company that made this honestly <laughs> think they put out a work of art. <laughs> That could they're, I, that they're, could they're, kind of be marketed on their part, you know, to build the hype. Yeah, they, they, they are at the very least very proud of what they've put yes. out. Yes. Yeah, if, if it was in, if, the as far as the animation goes and the CGI goes, the only compliment I have to give it is a hey, at least it's not X arm. <laughs> And you know what? I actually something. didn't find the only thing I actually had issue with animation wise because this might look. I've seen worse CGI out there. For the love of God, guys, please don't let it draw titties. <laughs> Not only that, you brought up Hide the Sausage. Where the fuck are the dicks? You're going you're gonna to do a okay. hentai movie. Okay, I was going to talk about this later, but sorry, Hardy, to interrupt you. Go ahead. Okay, i got to put a fucking rant out about this. Hi there. I'm Megan. Japan, I know you probably don't give a shit about me. But I'm here to say this. I don't know what's up with you guys being okay to show, like, the coochie, the badonkadonks, the bazingas, the mighty melons of massiveness. You can show our nips, you can show our clits, but for the love of God, stop censoring the goddamn pickle. Show me the sausage. Let me see the caterpillar without the fuzz. <laughs> show us the I pickle dick. I just want to see a big honking schlong without it being fuzzy white a little black bar that you think is hiding something like a fucking fuzzy ass bad lightsaber or just letting me see it uh, uh, to she's like flat fucking ass like come on where is my dick where's the penis <laughs> pickle dick pickle dick can't a bisexual girl see the naughty sausage the penis, the pleasure pole, <laughs> the mate, the meaty maypole. Just let us see some goddamn dick. Set sail at full mast. Exactly. Sometimes we need to know that the girl knows how to drive a stick shift to Pleasure Town. Double clutching that ass. Just. Just come on, guys. Yeah, Japanese uh, censorship laws are kind of strict with that, and this this is Listen, technically man. not a hentai. So yeah, it's not. It's it's yeah. it's softcore. Um, yeah. Listen, man, if you can show that the girl can hit the on button and that the dudes can play this like that Donkey Kong bongo controller back for the Wii, <laughs> we can see if the girls know how to use the Wii mode. Hardy, the floor is yours. Well, I know what we're going to be using for our clip show when we over <laughs> cover this for the next next centennial episode. But uh, okay, <laughs> you're like, how do I even follow that? I I'm speechless. No, I I'm, I get I'm guys very need a refractor. I get guys need a refractory period after they come, but us ladies can do it multiple times. Oh, okay. Ooh, okay. Um. But yeah, no, Sound Canes knew exactly what they were getting into because the show did not have very good reviews at all when it first came out. And so they sort of just took it and did what they wanted to and uh, punched up the dialogue a whole lot. They didn't play it so seriously like the Japanese did. They took a lot of liberties with it. And while basically keeping the basic storyline, uh, unlike ghost stories, they kept it, they kept the storyline intact they just made it really really uh, vulgar and, and funny and hilarious um but they yeah they knew exactly what they were doing and it it turns this movie that is a train wreck absolute train wreck in japanese to a cult movie classic uh that you you get together with your friends and you just you know, it's it's at the con, and you're just done. You've already watched Mad Bull 34, and you're not really in the mood to watch Vampire uh, 
wars instead. Uh, so you throw this on and you, you know, have a few drinks, munch some popcorn. If you got some, if you got some edibles, then, you know, that's the time. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, it turned it, it turned it from a absolute train wreck into an enjoyable B movie. But this B movie has like a literal B movie, but less Jerry Seinfeld. But, um, <laughs> But yeah, no, I I wouldn't say going back that I would have spent like the 50 bucks that I did to kickstart it because um, I don't think it is worth that much. It's it's a fun dub, but it's only like 70 minutes long and it doesn't have any special features. But um, but I don't say I regretted it. I'd say I uh, I got my money's worth. I enjoyed it and um, not going to watch it regularly. But, you know, when the friends yeah. come over, we can just throw it on, have some laughs. So. Yeah, I really like the directing and the script writing on this. Oh uh, yeah, like I I had a lot of fun watching this. Um, like I th- this this is I'm trying to say this kind of thing that this isn't stuff I watch regularly, but like I have a Shutter subscription. I've seen a Lucio Fulci movie. I enjoy stuff in this vague genre at least. Um, usually for like you know oh wow the makeup on the zombies are really really good oh he bit a shark this is great. <laughs> Uh, which you know, it's 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 lost a little bit when it's animated and there aren't real people having to do any of this. Um, but like, uh, at the very least, like this is this is definitely like the style of B movie I often will enjoy at least once. Uh, and I think I I agree. I think I think the the dub both improves upon it, and I also think captures. I feel I feel like at least kind of like the tone that's underneath it. Like uh, as Jamal mentioned, like they they did they worked with the the. You know, this wasn't done through a like a direct licensor, like they worked with the Japanese, and I feel like this is very much the kind of dub they wanted it to have. They wanted something that was kind of, you know, big and over the top and really profane. Like, cause I've gotten every instant I've gotten the impression that like they they are very happy with this themselves. And I can see why. Like this is this is very entertaining. It's very silly, it's very ridiculous. There is a bout of just wonderful, like, swearing and horrible, like, not safe for work language. Uh it is I don't think delights the white right word really when you get down to it, but like I had a lot of fun. Like you know, if I'm gonna if you're gonna watch this movie, this is the way to watch it because, uh, you know, you will laugh, you'll be a little grossed out, and it'll only take you about seventy minutes to do the whole thing. So, you know, perfect, perfect, perfect late night Saturday movie movie fodder. You know. Uh, so on that note, let's go on to our first group of two because there aren't a lot of speaking roles in this movie. There are a lot, a lot of screaming of ones, roles. There are a lot of screaming roles. Uh, many, mm-hmm. many of them provided by uh, people who uh, back the Kickstarter at certain levels. Um, most of them sound pretty fine, at least. You know, it's yeah. it's mostly yelling, but like good, it's good yelling. Yeah. Uh, I've heard I've heard bad yelling in movies like this. So like, hey, you're you're doing better than some of the professionals are doing. Good on you. Mm-hmm. You really actually do sound like you took a few too hot, a uh, hard ticks to the face. <laughs> that poor woman. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Apparently, her... don't feel sorry for that lady. I'm reading spoilers, and she's an awful person too. Like, yeah, there are very few good people in this series. Th- th- this 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 movie very much falls into the subcategory uh, that I've seen critics refer to as the uh, dead teenager category. Where at the beginning of the movie, there are teenagers, and by the end, they're dead. And most of them are rotten, so you don't feel bad about it when they get, uh, you know. Yeah. Oh. Wait, I forgot my favorite, well, my favorite part of the dub, because I'm me, is when, um, one of the characters is yammering on about how he's seen slasher movies, and he references, uh, Monday the 12th, Larry Takes Tokyo. <laughs> and any, any time you work in a reference to Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan, which is not the best Jason movie, but it has the best title of all the Jason movies, I'm always happy. Uh, <clears throat> but... Let's get on to our first group of characters. Uh, here we have a bunch of teenagers. Things go poorly for them. Who could have guessed? Uh, we have Mami, uh, Mami Miura. Uh, who's, uh, she's, she's got pink hair. She has very frilly clothing. Um, she pukes a couple of times because she doesn't want to be here. No, neither does anyone else. She's also uh, a, have... an aspiring idol. Yes, which is why she dresses like that. Yes. Uh, we have mm-hmm. Chitose Naruse, who's an uptight nerd. Uh, she she has the she has the joy of being briefly kidnapped by a giant wasp, and while she survives that encounter, it's still not a fun time for her either. Uh, and then we have we have uh, three other characters: uh, Ai Ino, who's a hiker, 
with a ponytail. Uh, Hiroshi Suge, who's uh, some dude with a blonde pompadour. And Satoshi Oda, who's sort of this uh, uh, pudgy guy. Uh, who, according, according to the wiki, is obsessed with uh, Mami, although that doesn't really come through that much in the movie. Uh, they're notable because they get uh, killed by, and basically have their uh, <laughs> blood sucked out by giant butterflies. Well, three of them did. Three of them. Uh, sorry, yes, just the last three. The other two, they continue on for a little bit longer. Um, so, you know, that happens within the first, like, ten minutes, so you know exactly what kind of movie you're getting into if you didn't for Pretty some much. reason. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, playing these characters, Mommy is played by uh, Kaylee Mills, you know, for playing such characters as Fiore F Forveged Igni Millennia in Fate Apocrypha. Don't even... Tr <laughs> Fiore Igni Millennia. <laughs> Don't worry, I had to learn how to fucking say that, because I had to be on that episode, thank you. Look, when, when fate names come up, sometimes I at least like to try on, on, on mic, so they know I can try, they, they know, people know I tried. Uh, Runa uh, Yomizuki and Kakigure, and Emilia and ReZero, starting life in another world. Uh, Chitose is played by Lizzie Ray. Uh, this is her first anime role. Congratulations, yep. Lizzie. Oh my god! Uh, She's... Well, oh. <laughs> Yeah, Hardy? about that. Oh, the first, the first I know. I, I know what you're gonna say, Hardy, and uh, let's save that for the conversation. <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah, this, this is her first anime role, but she does have other voice acting experience, which I'm sure we'll get into when we uh, talk about her performance. Uh, I is played by Sarah Vidneft, uh, who's uh, you know as uh, Michaela Watch in Blood by K Battlefront, Akemi uh, Soryuin in How Heavy Are the Dumbbells You Lift, and Minako Nakao in King's Game, the animation. Oh, for fuck's sake. Thrust of culture right there! Look, 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 I haven't seen King's Game. It sounds like hot trash. This is also hot trash. It seemed appropriate. Yes, but I'd rather I believe watch I this described... hot trash than the other I'm, one. <laughs> I, mean, I... I mean, yes, this is, this is better and shorter, but still. I mean, I once described, so, sorry for how nasty this line is about to be to you gentlemen, I described King's Game as what goes on in a lady's uterus during their period. That's just unpleasant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anywho, uh, Hiroshi is played by Brendan Blob, uh, Blobber. Blaber. You know, for, I think it's Blaber. Blaber. Oh, thank you. Uh, Brendan Blaber, who, uh, who you know for such roles as Mummy in My Hero Academia, the movie Hero Rising. Heroes Rising. Uh, Grant, the Grand Bishop of the Terrace Church in Legend of the Galactic Heroes, Dainu Thesis, and Avi Kobo in No Guns Life. And Satoshi is played by Yong Ye, uh, who hasn't done a lot of voice acting roles, at least in terms of uh, anime and stuff. Uh, his most powerful thing is probably Hyperion in Blood Bak uh, Blade Blade Burst Sparking. Mm -hmm. uh, but he also has recently appeared in Genshin Impact, Impact playing the roles of Jingming and... Uh, Yi Ning, so yeah, good for him. A lot of people play that game. He's mainly known for his YouTube's reviews. Ah, I see. Yeah. All right. Uh, Megan, would you like to start us off again? Uh, sure. Let me start off with uh, Young Ye, who has one of my favorite lines in the movie. <laughs> my shirt may say yes, but my heart says no. Because <laughs> he's literally wearing a shirt that says yes, no. <laughs> yeah. And that's like his literal like one shining moment before he gets like stabbed and sucked dry like a fat Capri Sun. <laughs> oh man, Poor I'm bastard. out. Oh man, damn it! This one's boy flavored. I wanted dragon fruit. <laughs> oh damn it. Uh, no, I thought he was pretty good. Uh, Brendan as uh, he, he or she, I think, is he the guy that, he's not the guy that they, uh, that, is he the guy that gets picked up by the wasps? No, 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 those no, are actually mm -hmm. two different characters. That's a different, that's a different blonde guy. He, I, he, I believe, also gets killed by the butterflies in that first scene. Okay, yeah, I think he does too. Uh, he was pretty he, good as being a big douchebag. He, He's, um, he's one of the guys that, um... Uh, oh, he's the he's guy the who gets guys... killed after Sarah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah he takes he it in the pretty... eyeball. Yeah, he takes... Ew. Ugh. Mm -hmm. I thought he was I thought he was the guy who gets uh, the... Stop looking at me with those big old eyes. Yeah. Where his eyes are like... The parasite makes his eyes, like, wiggle. He's like a knockoff of that one dude from Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> Congratulations, I've just heard Jujutsu Kaisen for everybody. Um... Just he Brent, Brendan did a pretty good job. 
Uh, Sarah as I doesn't make it very far, but her delivery is, I'm a hiker, so I pee outside all the time, is great. Uh, <laughs> she gets some good death screens. Uh, Chitose, Lizzie Ray does a really good job of, uh, being this kind of more stoic girl. Uh, obviously, uh, she and, uh, Mutsumi, when they get off this island, are gonna have a clam dive together. Uh, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, she's gonna, they're gonna, uh, I guess, uh... These bitches gay. These bitches gay. <laughs> Good for them. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. You don't need it. You don't need to hide the sausage. Only the pearl. Because <laughs> remember, kid, according to Candace Owen, because a girl can pop out her vagina and stick it in another girl. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Everything about that sentence kind of complexes me, but that's just Candace Owens. And then, but no, I think Lizzie does a really great job kind of capturing this. She gets a lot of more grunty stuff, like groans. But then again, Titosa gets knocked out for like a good portion of the movie. And then when she wakes up, she almost gets raped. And I'm just like, oh, did we really need that? And you get the most pathetic scene of not seeing a man's dick. Uh, and then Kaylee Mills as Mommy the Little Lesbian. Um, just, Kaylee does the best, like, screaming little bitch voice. But then you gotta hear her say dirty words and it's great. And just the whole, what a cunt! Just like, mm -hmm. like her, her, like, soft, squeaky little girl voice just saying naughty, naughty words. And then there's just the whole scene with her and uh, Ay uh, Ayumi, where they're in the water, and she's like, hey, girl. Hey, girl. I know you're gay. Be gay with me. I can show you the world. <laughs> I'm like a dude. I know where your clit is. <laughs> and just... She also has my other favorite line in the movie where, like, they're trying to get in the door because they've been locked out by the bad two. And you just hear her go in the most... It's like the spirit of fear, the fate went just right through Mommy's body. It just She just goes, if you die, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to fuck you. <laughs> and her delivery is so earnest and so pissed. And it was great. Like, I would love to hear Kaylee Mills get to be in another show, like, another trashy dub like this. Or a show where she gets to play, like, a vulgar tiny little girl. Because she nailed it. And it was hysterical. Yeah. <coughs> go oh, ahead. Excuse you. Alright. Uh, Jamal, you wanna go next? Uh, yeah. Let me start with, uh, Young Ye. Uh... Young, he's not really a name I've ever heard before at all, actually. But I thought for what little Satoshi did, <laughs> he played off very well. And it's just, yeah, it kind of sucked that uh, he gets off by his butterfly, but, you know. Ah, it sucked. <laughs> I mean, if, if, fat, hey, if fat meets flavor, then he was fucking delicious, you know? <laughs> oh, shit, we got a juicy one, boys. <laughs> Thank you, Sam the Cooking Guy. It's like, uh, ooh, the little but... cream-filled kind. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I love Reverse Timon and Pumbaa. <laughs> Slimy yet satisfying. It means a lot of worries for the rest of your days. Dun, dun, dun. You ain't problem-free. Go fuck some bees. <laughs> Number Tada. <laughs> Oh, God Kyo Reto. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <sighs> so, yeah, you did pretty good. Uh, Brendan Blaber, I'm glad we get to talk about Brendan Blaber, if only for a short bit. He didn't do much, but, man, he definitely sounded aggravated. <laughs> I mean, if you were stuck on an island with a bunch of lesbians and bugs, wouldn't you? He's getting blue-balled for the rest of eternity. Come to think of it, I think he and, uh, what the hell is his name? He and Kai had, like, one of my favorite lines. Is, uh, 
when the Mive shows her boobs to them, and he's like, <gasps> I'm only a half mast. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> uh, he did pretty good for what short time we've had with him. Uh, I'm going to skip to Chitose, because uh, Lizzie Ray is obviously a name I've never heard before. Then I found out why, and I was like, oh. Oh, that's why he picked it for the role. But, like you said, for the most part, she gets knocked out. And she doesn't really do a lot a lot of speaking until, like, the very end or so. Or whatever she's around uh, Mutsumi. Yeah, I thought she did pretty good. And, uh, although, to me, she kind of sounds like, and uh, I'm sorry for the comparison, she kind of sounds like Crystal with a party mouth. But that's, but I thought that was pretty cool. And I mean that as a compliment. Uh, now to get to the last two, uh, <laughs> bad joke incoming. It's amazing how one Takagi gets sucked and the other does the sucking. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. I, I wish we had more time with, uh, I, but, uh, you know, so does very well playing this character who's not a lot, but, uh, it's also kind of foul mouth too. At the beginning of the scene, I'm like, this doesn't make really feel much like a hentai. Then you see her get sucked off by this bug, and uh, she starts p- pissing herself. I was like, yeah, I can see how this is becoming hentai now. Yeah, that wasn't the moment where I was like, oh, yeah, this is hentai. That comes later. Yeah, she gets sucked off to turn to, to the villain of the week from the first episode of Sailor Moon, but I digress. And Katie Mills, Katie Mills was very good at uh, playing this... Uh, Idol who's, who, she seems is on the outside, but you know deep down she wants something deep, so, uh, there's more layers to Bobby than I expected, but, uh, she manages to pull off this extra character very well, so, uh, I guess that's pretty much it for this group, I mean, of course, uh, there's five of them to survive, spoiler alert, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. My turn? Yes. Let's just say to uh, we didn't get to hear much of Brendan Blaber in this, but just keep your eye out on for him in future projects. Hell yeah. Yep. Because he takes it in the eye, you know. <laughs> I scream, you scream. <laughs> oh, no. We all yes. no. scream for bug screen. Yeah, if just for for those of you listening out there, and if you do watch this, just beware there are a few instances of eye uh, eyeball stuff. So, if that's <laughs> a trigger for you, you might want to cover your eyes at, at a few moments. So, but anyways, um, yeah, the, about the three who don't uh, last uh, the first five minutes of the film, um, Yang Ye's line, his delivery of. My shirt may say yes, but my heart says no was one of the, my favorite lines in the entire movie. It, it's a shame that he uh, he had to get taken out so quickly. Yeah. Um, fun fact about I, you know, one of my favorite lines, I believe, was she was giving, um, I think it was Chitose, some tea. Yeah. And she says, there's nothing better than drinking jasmine tea out of a shitty aluminum container. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I'm going to go pee, and then and and what is it? What's her name? I, um, uh, uh, Murray just says, "Uh, thanks for letting us know that." <laughs> As you know, I'm on the As hiking crew. I'm on the hiking crew. You know, we pee outside I'm all in, the time. I'm in the hiking club. But yeah, this but is... uh, but in, in case of um changes from the adaptation as you mentioned earlier everyone was expecting this to be a little bit worse than it actually is that's because it's toned down from the manga i'm i'm not shocked to learn that i'm gonna be honest because the way that i actually dies uh, what's the little tendril that the um the proboscis the proboscis oh no does it go up the it doesn't go in her butt Oh, it goes in her cooch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. So, 
that's her. Yeah, the way she dies in the manga is significantly more, um, more. Uh, what's the word? Uh, graphic. Grotesque. Graphic, yes, and grotesque. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, I, I I enjoyed her for the five minutes that she was in, and uh, and it's kind of a shame that she got off so quickly because according to the manga, she was the cartographer. She was actually going to be making them a map and finding where their location is. So of course, she has to die first. So. Can't let the useful one be here. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, as the other two, uh, Ch- Chitose doesn't really speak a whole lot because she takes the the venom from the wasp and she's in a coma for the most most of the film. Um, and so she's kind of hard to judge from the few lines that she has. But I, I would like to hear uh, Lizzie Ray in more things. I think that she has a lot of potential. And... Um, and uh, I would like to see her in more, more you know, standard productions outside of this, her not safe for work um, productions and, and, and stuff like this. I would like to see her in like a more, more legitimate um, roles. I, I think that this is a good ex- ex- experiment and uh, a good exercise to see what, what she's capable of. Um, <laughs> and finally, Kaylee Mills is a troll. Uh, she's, uh, she's not above using others for her own benefit, and she's, she's not the worst person by far in this group, but she's up to something. She's, you could tell she's, uh, she's looking out mainly for number one, and she'll, uh, that's one of the reasons why she tries seducing Ayumi she does actually basically um so that she can use her for protection i think kaylee mills pulls off that kind of two-faced um got something to hide type of attitude and so yeah i really enjoy that and (laughs) the fact that she she without provocation just when when they attack the butterfly with the uh the knife and she just flat out says that didn't do jack fucking shit (laughs) yeah Sold me on backing this. I said you jack shit. She's like a she's like a little French poodle with a potty mouth. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Fuck, fuck, I'm gonna let you go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but that's all I had to say. Uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm really in agreement. Um, Sarah, Brendan, and Yange aren't in the <coughs> movie for very long, but I do think, like, they, they get their moments. They are entertaining. Uh, they, they act out dying horribly pretty well. <laughs> they, 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 some, you're, in movies like this, sometimes they're a little thankless roles that are mostly there to show how bad things are, but they play them well. Uh, and, and Lizzie doesn't get to do too much to do because Chitose is out of commission for so much of the movie, but I liked her performance as it was. Like, I, I would be quite happy to hear her and other stuff. I think she's got uh, quite a bit of talent. Uh, and Kaylee is just hilarious because they, 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 they understand the just that, like, this is an extremely cutesy character, and it's going to be really funny when she says really profane things. And Kaylee understands this, and she nails it pretty really consistently. I'm very... I'm, uh, just <laughs> <clears throat> she's good i was very happy with this i was very happy with her performance this is good good stuff all around uh and now on to our second group of characters uh the rest of the people in this movie because there aren't that many speaking roles here because it's a mo- movie uh first up we have mutsumi oribe uh she's the more or less the protagonist of this story because she's an amateur entomologist so she knows what these bugs are and what exactly they do, which makes her extremely valuable just on a general survival basis. Uh, she also has a cowboy hat that she likes. Looks very, very nice on her. Uh, and she also feels very sad when they have to kill the bugs because you know, the bugs aren't evil. They're just insects. They're just they don't following mean... their instincts. Yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't mean any intentional harm. It's just like, ooh, food. <laughs> Delicious. Um, we have Ayumi Matsuoko. Oh, Atsuoka. Uh, she's a, she's the captain of the softball team. She's very sporty. She and me, she and mommy have a thing. Hey, mommy. It's, it's very unexpected. 
Uh, we have it, Sushi Ka uh, Kamijo. He's an asshole. <laughs> he's the fucking worst. He's he's the guy in the horror movie where it's like, yeah, I hope he dies. He's awful. Fuck you. Uh, we have, uh, hmm? Oh, I thought someone said something. Uh, we have, uh, Mire Gino. Uh, she's a hot lady. She's also kind of, uh, insidious and bad, but, you know. Looking out for number one. And, uh, we have, uh, Kazuhiko Kai, who has dreadlocks. And he's, the tech, he's the techie one, I guess? Yeah, he ended up being more, more like, resourceful and competent than I was expecting. I was sort of expecting yeah. him just to be another dickhead, and he ended up being a lot better than that. So. He's low-key best boy. Yeah. It's like, hey, I turned the power on and found some food. Yeah. He's also responsible for the single worst pun I've heard in years. Oh, he's I bet also I know the only, it is. I, He's also the only guy in this entire movie who proves not to be a rapist. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, playing these characters, uh, Mitsubi is being played by Sarah Roach. You know, for such roles as Maki Oze in Fire Force. Kako Tenegan in The Day I Became God, and uh, Sumire Fujita in Tamayomi, The Baseball Girls. Uh, Ayumi is played by Brittany Karbowski, who you know for Eddie in Angels, is, in Angels of Death. Uh, Chocolate in Jormungand, and Claire Aoki in, Gle in Gleipnir. Uh, Ats Atsushi Ka Kamijo is being played by Nick Landis, who you know as uh, Fugaka in Fugaku in Chaos Dragon. Quicks, uh, Quicksilver in Ninja Slayer from Animation, and Zaji in Beat X. He's also Lani Pator from Team I was Star. like, I was Yeah. Like... From what? He's Lani. He's Vegeta in Dragon Ball Z Bridge. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, is that him? Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 I didn't make that connection. Yeah, Lani Pator. Lani. Hey, Lani. Like, I, like I, I, I know a lot of people's online nicknames and not what they're actually called, so sometimes I'm a little slow I, to make the connect I, those he is He is a ruthless murderer in uh, in uh, uh, Among Us, which, if you've never watched the TFS replays of Among Us, they're fucking hilarious. Oh, no. Uh, where was I? Uh, <clears throat> uh, Mire is played by Amberly Connors, who you know as Piek Finger in Attack on Titan the final season. Aie uh, Kuramoto in King's Game, the animation, and Ryo Rollins in Ryo, Rainbow Gate. And Kazuhiko is played by Alejandro Saab, who known as Uno in Nanbaka, uh, Akira Uni Unikai in Re Life, and Romero in Zombieland Saga, because that seemed like an appropriate thing to bring up in this movie. Fair enough! <laughs> not, not, mm, yeah. not something Romero himself would have made, but, you know. You might have appreciated it. You probably would have thought, like, eh, the gore effects on this would have been pretty good. For a live-action movie. Fair enough. Uh, and then you just wonder why there's not enough, like, uh, cast uh, critique of, like, capitalism or something like that. The bugs are clearly a symbol for the for the overgrowth of man. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, Megan, would you like to go first again? Sure. Uh, let's start with... Uh, let me see. Start with... Uh, I'm going to start with uh, Kai. Uh, this is very much like Alejandro having fun with himself. Um, God, that was awfully flirty. <laughs> oh, no. Did I miss something? This is like the stiff performance thing from uh, Shimonetta all over again. Alejandro <laughs> <laughs> uh, was having a lot of fun as Kai playing Kai. <laughs> <laughs> he has some some great lines like the uh, like um. He's very understated. <laughs> I also love the part where at the end they're like, we all heard you scream. We thought you were dead. He's like, no, nah, I just saw some spoopy shit. <laughs> he specifically says spoopy, in fact. Yeah, he says, he, he, I'm not joking. He says spoopy, not spooky. Yeah. And I love that he's just like, okay, crazy bitch. You can make a giant halogen lamp to blow this goddamn bug up. Um... Uh, Atishi, I actually had a really hard time believing that was Lanny Pator. Because I am so used to his Vegeta voice or his normal, like, actual speaking voice. Because I watch him stream every so often. Um, 
So I'm used to his normal, like, speaking voice. I actually didn't know it was him. It, like, I didn't realize it was him, even though I had the booklet that had the cast on it. <laughs> until he got angry and it sounded like DBZ and Bridge Vegeta. My boy needs his feel-good juice! <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> I love my wife! Um, and I just like how this guy is such an absolute douchebag, and he nails being an absolute douche canoe, uh, in the words of Ayumi. Um, Ayumi, Brittany Karbowski has a lot of fun playing everyone's favorite lesbian with Ball, who just wants to... <laughs> okay, who has never seen the Hema Daisy comics? Who's never seen the Hema Daisy uh, Persona 4 wait, comics? I've I seen them every once in a while. Uh, I haven't, like, I've seen them pop up on Twitter every now and then. Just, when I said balls, the only thing popped into my head was the guy in the basketball team going, I love balls! Because that's Justin Briner. <laughs> um, but just, she's so, she's spunky, she's fun. Uh, I love when she's, um... When they're when she's getting her lesbian softcore moment with mommy, and mommy goes, "Just let me put my balls in your basket," and she goes, "I don't think you know about sports. <laughs> so let me put your softballs in the basket." I don't think you know very just her very earnest, confused Tony. I don't think you know about sports. It it, it has very strong. This isn't a beach. This is a bathtub energy to it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like she's like they get they somehow manage to get back home and she's like scrubbing off and mommy shows up and goes I see you don't have I see you don't have a lifeguard at this beach this isn't a beach mommy this is a bathtub oh that goes giant bug ah <laughs> that's all an iconic porn moment that has been memed so far as as far as we look at our lemon tree oh no it's the lemon stealing whore. <laughs> I'm making very deep cut porn references tonight. I don't know why. Um, I mean, look at what we're covering. Fair enough. This, this, uh, this, is, this is this 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 is probably not the closest we're going to get to hentai on this show, but it's up there. Uh, where is it? I think I had some. I had put some lines down here because I I remember I said uh, I was cracking open a bug a girl one with the bugs. Um. Uh, I don't think <laughs> I don't think he knows parts. There was another part where uh, I think she tells uh, "Bitch, I will strike you the fuck out." Yeah. <laughs> to Amber Lee Connors, girl. To which, holy shit, Amber Lee Connors. Uh, I think that she gets the best one-liners in the fucking movie. Like she gets some of the best mo- lines in the movie. Like uh, I wasn't in. Uh, I haven't gotten this much shit on my face until my ex got into scat. And she's got, like, the ultra-sexy bitch voice. Um. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just... Oh, uh, where else where else was one of them that she gets? Uh, the hide-the-sausage moment. What was it? I didn't fuck you so you could fuck yourself and die! <laughs> um. Thanks, bitch. Uh, oh no. Glad to know the stick di- the stick up your ass didn't die when we crashed. <laughs> And, like, she is so good at, like, the sexy, hey, boy, you want to betray the others and fuck me raw? Um, <laughs> uh, just, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of a comic I saw yesterday, which was, Crom and Robin get to fuck during peacetime in court and got fucking raw during a war! Um, which is huge spoilers for Fire Emblem, but whatever. Um... I think that she is probably one of the best performances in the movie. She is absolutely despicable and you will want to punch her in the goddamn face. And Amber is so good at it. But at the same time, you're kind of like, yeah, I probably would tap that if I was desperate enough. Good night, mom. Who's heard me the entire time. That stays in. <laughs> yep, nope, nope, that stays in. Um, no, and then uh, Sarah Roach as our 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 Steve Irwin, our little our little uh, crocodile bug D. Uh, I like that Sarah actually plays this fairly straight. 
Like, she is the one person clearly taking this seriously as a character. And I love it. She does obviously curse and stuff. And she does a good job of drawing the line between bugs and uh, bug facts and, like, being snarky. Uh, I love, I think, like, one of the first lines is where she picks up her backpack and she says it's got the seal of approval or some shit. Um, but if there's one thing I need to talk about this movie, and it has nothing to do with Sarah's performance, it is the two-minute hallway walk shot! Uh, yeah! <laughs> of this girl just walking down, and there's just this bad rock riff under it. And you're like... What's going on? Is this the end of the movie? Does the bus run through here? <laughs> <laughs> but I love Sarah's performance and she's so earnest and she's so sweet and you would totally follow this bitch into battle. And I love that she kind of, I personally feel like she kind of played up the gay aspect. Um, overall, really great performances. Jamal? Uh. Oh, uh, yeah. So, I'm going to start with Kai, because uh, Alejandro Saab, <laughs> Alejandro Saab is definitely very funny when he's in his natural element. I mean, it's more like Kazuhito Kagi to me, but, uh, yeah, I'm glad Alejandro was playing one of the only guy, the only guy that's like, that doesn't turn out to be an asshole or scared. Well, except for when he's walking down to the mall, which... They never really explained what the hell was going on at that point, but uh, I I th- I kind of appreciated when uh, he ended up knocking some sense into Kami Joe and Mire. Well, by knocking some sense into be knocking them the fuck out with a fire extinguisher. Hell yeah, girl! I mean, <laughs> hell yeah, boy! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, he did a very good job playing his character. Uh, Amberly Connors is a redhead. Uh, <laughs> How many times have I seen that character before? <laughs> but it, it, Emma is very good at that type of thing. That's one thing I've learned. I mean, she, this character is basically like Hozuki from Kono Oto, except if she fully went the bitch route, because, oh my god. Ooh, you, you trust me, talk about people you want to knock the fuck out. Speaking of which, uh, Nick and is comic Joe. It's been a hot minute since the BDX episode, but... I thought Nick did pretty good being a pretty convincing asshole, even if he is a little bit over the top. It's funny, he can't, sometimes you can't tell if he was trying to pie for that ass or if he was tr- just trying to pie for his boy Akira. But, it seems to me like there was some kind of connection more than just friendship, but, uh, you know, at the end he kind of chickened out and was taken advantage by Mure. And I thought Nick did a very convincing part of his end. Uh, Brittany Karbowski is Ayumi. It's funny, except for maybe, what, uh, Soli, that i never seen to play this kind of character before. Especially with this kind of foul mouth, that I found out she cursed in the Black Bullet, which thank God they're Eclipse, because I heard that show is not that good. Yeah, she cursed but, a lot in Gleipnir, too. Oh, yeah, definitely Gleipnir. Oh, man, she was hot in Gleipnir, too, but, uh... <laughs> I like when Brittany manages to get out of Elmer, but, you know, extend f- her reach farther than what she's capable of, because it, am- it amazes me what she can surprise you with at times. Like, for example, Grape Dude. It's just, I guess, a breath of fresh air for the least. And, uh, Sarah Roach's boots to me. Well, for one thing, I think this is kind of a lead, if not major character for Sarah outside of Fire Force. And for two... It's amazing how they cast the lead for an insect hentai as Sarah Roach. I wasn't going to say it. I was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like right there. But yeah, Sarah did very well portraying both the scared aspects, the uh, knowledgeable aspects of Mutsumi. And yeah, she did play up the uh, lesbian aspects a bit. But one thing that surprises me, and I'm going to save this for a future episode, but one thing that surprised me, I can finally, I'm can i finally able to stop picking out her voice now because somehow, in some way, she sounded to me like Lauren Lander. I don't know how, but it kind of does. I thought that was kind of pretty cool. 
Uh, but I'll get more into that in another episode. I guess I'm good here. So uh, you want to take it from here, Hardy? I can't remember the pun exactly in question word for word. Was it mm-hmm. was it this this illuminates you? It was yeah. We may not have any saline solution, but uh, something like, but I could be your greater aid. And the moment I heard it, I just felt this this knot in my stomach, and I just elicited a. That was a painful pun. I have to go back and actually listen to it to find out what. What was the pun? Something about finding saline solution. He says, we may not have any uh, saline solution, but I could be your greater aid. God damn it. I I, I thought it was the illumination one. When the lights come on, he's like, "Eh, my personality's illuminating, isn't it? Or something like that. No. There are a lot of bad puns in this movie. Let's be frank with ourselves. Yes. It, It even ends on a bad pun. (laughs) <laughs> the last line is literally a bad pun. <laughs> That's right. It's like what is it again? Oh, it's it's in the little like, like after credits. We it's, let... like we're... Hmm? it's like we're not going to let anyone bug us. Uh... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know that the after credits one is bad too because like, oh, just leave it. We're going to go out and get some grub. Well, I mean not grubs, but you know actual food and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. But no, I just I think uh, I think Alejandro has some of the both better and worse puns because I think he's he's the one at the very first is like I don't need to be you know at the very beginning of the movie he's like I don't need to make a bad joke here but I'm really bugged out man. Mm-hmm. So I always I think Kai is low key best boy like he's he's a bit cowardly but I mean considering the situation I mean who wouldn't be but I mean he's the closest thing to a decent person outside of maybe Mutsumi and Chitose. Um, the three of them are the only one I would actually say are good people. Um, well, maybe Ayumi as well. But um, but he's just he's just so chill when he's not being chased by giant bugs and he's just, you know, they're there for it. He's He sounds like he's the kind of guy you would do an edibles with. So... <laughs> yeah. I yeah. thought you were going to say he's the type of guy that you could do Danimals with. <laughs> <laughs> to Those which, two. Those two. To which, how, do you, how would you even do a Danimals? Would you just like take a Danimals yogurt and like a straw and suck it up your nose? Or you shotgun, or you shot a shotgun in like a can of beer. Mm. <laughs> I don't know why, but that just thought of like something really dumb that I I watched somebody like one of my friends do in high school, and it was like we were all at the lunch table like the year that I met him, and uh, this is how I met my ex actually in high school was like we were at lunch one day and I had a packet of like Crystal Light, and I oh, jokingly asked my friend's adopted brother to snort it like Coke, and he did it. Oh. oh. <laughs> That sounds that sounds very unpleasant. I can yeah. only imagine the flavor he sneezed out. <laughs> I mean, he did it like a champ. That reminds me of the the Jackass first Jackass movie where uh, Steve-O did uh, wasabi scooters. Oh, good god! Oh, he snorted wasabi up his nose. <laughs> oh, oh, no. oh, god! That hurts me. No. Yeah, it hurts to watch, but it also is funny. So, but anyways. Um, so yeah, yeah. Alejandro plays the best, low key best boy. Um, Nick is just ultimate douche nozzle. He he has he likes one person in that entire group, and it's not the girl that he sleeps with. It is his his, his best boy, who he will do anything for, even if it involves uh, feeding him mouth to mouth saline solution. Yeah, I'm kind of mad about that because, and believe it or not, this is coming from me. I really wanted to see that scene happen. I'm like, I thought they were going to go a distance because it's a head tie, but nope, they cut that part out. Yeah, they, come on, guys. At least, like, come on. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, and Amber plays this just horrible, horrible, horrible girl, and um, it's good thing she's pretty because she ain't got much else going for her outside of yeah, the, just just this horrible person. And, and but she does have some of the absolute best one-liners. And uh, what was it? You you have remembered all the good ones. I I'm drawing a blank, and I only watched it a few days ago. Um, but here's some fun fact: is that the ending is technically anime original, because mm-hmm. in the manga they don't leave them. Hmm. I don't I don't I'm having a hard time remembering or. Fu- I think doing... that yeah they take them with them because eventually they both die. Yeah, because <laughs> actually it turns out Mine goes out. Well, she has a face turn and fighting the giant centipede and she goes out fighting the the giant centipede but do you want to know how Atsushi uh, Atsu dies heavy trigger warning very very heavy trigger warning okay oh no so there's this other girl for, that they meet up with who's not in the anime and no she is at the very very end oh yeah. her she, yeah. she, she's a dark mystic looking lady in the hut no, no, no. It's, it's the, w- one of the two girls who comes out, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, they meet up, and Atsushi, uh, he sort of blackmails her into the deed. Oh, yeah, boy. he he wants to say what it is. He rapes her. Yeah, and so afterwards they fall asleep, and the fire goes out that they were next to, and they both get raped by botflies. Yes. Oh. Yes. And Oof. The, the, here's the part. Trigger warning. After they get raped by the bot flies, their larva eats them both from the inside out. Yes. Oof. So to say that the anime uh, toned things down was an understatement. So, but yeah, he, no, not gonna lie, he gets what he deserves uh, in the manga, at least. Um, I think I remember reading that on TV Tropes. That's where I read about it, yeah. That's where I read about it. Yeah, because the manga out here isn't licensed, so I can't actually... I can't imagine why it sounds so Gee, awesome. I wonder. <laughs> For the same reason Redo of Healer hasn't been licensed. So. Fa- Fangoria wouldn't publish that, Jesus Christ. I would yeah. take this over Redo of Healer any day. Mm-hmm. But anyways, I think that both of them, back to the dub, both of them sound really, really devious and evil, and they both play it really well. Um, Brittany Karpowski, her first line in the entire movie, she goes into people's houses, and she just starts taking stuff. Yes! (laughs) And she's like, so I went into these houses, and I take stuff like you do. (laughs) She's got so many softball puns, and uh, even when they like ki- you do, when they <laughs> kill the big Dobson fly at the end, she's like, "I wonder if it's dead." She's like, "Take it from me, girl. This, this, uh, this, this strike, this strike this is, is this is a fly, and it's out. This is a fly, and it's out. Yeah. So yeah, it, she was really fun to listen to, um, and I am gonna say that I, I, I think it's more than a little bit of a coincidence that a your lead or lead actress is called named Sarah Roach. More than a little bit. I think she did she earned the she probably earned the role well definitely earned the role on her acting chops, but it was it oh, helped yeah. that she had a convenient last name to go along with the whole what's ironic theme of the movie. Yeah, what's ironic is I forgot to mention one of my favorite lines from her was uh regarding the hard ticks. Yes. That entire yes. sequence is just one huge <laughs> double entendre. I, I was like, I see what that you're doing there. Scene, that hard tick scene, the end of it, fucked with me all night. That was the only part of the movie that scared me. Yes, because their teacher ended up taking one too many hard ticks to the face. But, uh, but yeah, no, this... My... <laughs> Another one of my favorite one-liners, because it's funny how she mainly is the straight man, but she will make a, f- a funny joke every now and then. One of the, my favorite at the very beginning is she's talking to Ayumi. He's like, can you hear that? It sounds like a bunch of loud assholes banging on a vending machine. <laughs> yeah. And the very yes! next scene, 
the very next scene is a bunch of loud assholes paying on a vending machine. Not a vending machine. Oh, but what thing that bothers me about Mutsumi as a character, not necessarily a performance, is how she's so empathetic to the bugs, even though they're literally killing her 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 friends, and and she's like, I I I can't believe I helped kill that innocent butterfly, and I'm like. You just watched it drain three people right in front of you. There's nothing innocent about it. I think at that point, it was kind of like a shiki moment, you know, it was kill or be killed. Right. But another scene that I couldn't help but just guffaw at is when uh, she saves... What's her name? Um, uh, her girlfriend? Yeah, because these bitches gay too. Um, yes. She saves Chitose from the uh, the butterfly, and Chitose seems, oh, I'm so glad nobody got hurt. And the very next frame is literally eyes emaciated corpse. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> oh. And they just sort Timing! of leave the three of them there. Ay, Dios mio. <laughs> they just sort of leave the three of them there and not. Never, not, never bring the subject up that three of their schoolmates just kind of got sucked dry. So, but yeah, no, I just, I the dub is so good for this this movie. It turns a turd into a treat. So that's all I have to say. Yeah, um, yeah, these 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 people are a lot of fun. Um, Alejandro's really great. I think I Alejandro delivers like funny lines really well, and I feel like they they they. They they cast him knowing that. I feel like he gets a lot of like the really like good slash awful puns because of that. He's just his, his delivery is just consistently entertaining throughout. Um, Nick and Amber are really good at playing just awful people. <laughs> like they are and so she is the worst. And Nick Nick really just plays the like sleaze and asshole in him really, really well. Like I I was very entertained. It was very much like, you know, this is the correct level of hatred I should be feeling with this character. Good job. I am suitably pissed off. Uh, and Amber really brings out just sort of the, like, just, you know, mean, sexy lady part of Mireille. Just like, yeah, you're, yeah, you would lock the door with the other people outside because, you know, gotta look out for number one. And yeah, you get some annoying people killed in the process. Even better, a bonus. Um, they're, they're, they're also very entertaining. Um, Brittany's a lot of fun is just, you know, the sports puns alone are just very entertaining. I... Look, I like puns. I can't help it. That's who I am. Uh, so, you know, naturally, a movie like this is great for me. And Brit I, I, Brittany's just very funny because she is very, like... She's not as earnest as um, Sarah's character, but she is still very... She's very earnest. Uh, also, she's just funny when she swears a lot because she's also very good at it. Um, and I, I, I agree. I think Sarah plays the character very straight, and I think that works really well for the character. Like, she is so... She's so earnest and well-meaning, even when it gets a little absurd, <laughs> contextually. Mm -hmm. um, but I think she she plays. But I think that that then becomes more funny as a consequence. Like I think she plays the character really well, and um, and nothing else. She delivers all that you know, to sort of you know entomology information. Like you know, it doesn't get too boring or anything. It's very much like uh, it's well delivered. Uh, and especially th I think the bit with the ticks is probably like one of the probably one of the few like actually like scary bits in it just because of how it plays out and i think she she just so that slow delivery of like what the ticks are like and what they're doing and then them suddenly realizing like oh my god we're surrounded by them what are we gonna do uh, i thought that was really well played out um yeah these good performances i like them a lot uh so on that note let's take ourselves to final thoughts uh, megan you want to start us off uh yeah i think that this was Let's be real. Uh, to to the animation team behind this, uh, look, you guys, you guys made a thing. Um, was it my cup of tea? No. Is it someone's cup of tea? Yeah, sure. Just not mine. Uh, but the dub made me like happy to have backed your thing. Uh, I think it was a great decision. Uh, to work with Sound Cadence on this, and I think Marissa did a bang up job. This was the right level of funny without being a hundred percent gag. Um, this is, I think, how dubs like this, where if the licensor is okay with it, 
go for it. Like, I think this is how it should be done, because it, this doesn't really date itself at all. Like, there's no pop culture jokes. It's all just what's in front of you, and I think it's really well-crafted, and it's really funny. I think the acting in this is really good. Uh, so this is, like I said, like, this has become, like, the new perfect... If you're down and we're drunk and you're not going to get grossed out by this, let's put it on and have a good Saturday night. That's all I have to say. I think I've said the rest of it, like, while we were out doing the recording, so. Yeah. Uh, Jamal? Well, like I said to begin, that I kind of eat some humble pie because, uh, like Megan said, this is also not my cup of tea. I would not go out and watch this intentionally. Until South Cade just got involved, is that boy is like, you know what? I'm gonna give him the benefit of that. Let me back this and see what it's all about. And I was generally surprised how much I enjoyed this. Yeah, this is like some kind. Of, this is like something you normally eat, like a popcorn kind of thing. Like you know, if it's something you drink with your buddies, you just decide to watch something. To which, if we ever get together as a card. Let's all strap down Andrew and make him watch this. So, uh... <laughs> yes! <laughs> I know that man don't drink, so... <laughs> but, yeah, it it was very good. It was, it was very faithful to the tone of the show. Even though, yes, it is vulgar. I mean, come on, let's be honest. How many of us were not vulgar in high school? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like I like I said the last in the Arte episode, I look I always look forward to more sound and stuff to see what they do next. And that's all I have to say. Well that and I do apologize for being an asshole, but I I I genuinely love this dub. So genuinely. See here. Yeah, like I love this dub. Like, good job. I'm not being mean to your thing because I hate it. It's just my way of coping. <laughs> like the guys who might hear this, who worked on this, if you think I'm being mean to your show, you should hear me talk about shows I like, where I call favorite characters of mine awful pieces of shit. Also, because I alluded it to earlier, way to go! <laughs> you called out Watch Mojo, <laughs> guys. Wow. <laughs> Ooh, you had. To... Why did they exactly say like we know what it is? We're we just want to have fun or something. I don't know, but you know, watch Bojo. It's a bunch of idiots. So uh... <laughs> yeah, let's be real. Watch getting getting your anime ranking news from Watch Mojo is like asking the Magic Eight Ball what's popular. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. See, here's the thing. When it comes to me, is. This is my kind of thing, not the whole fetish part, but the grindhouse part. Uh, yeah. I'm the kind of guy who's, you know me, I like garbage, basically. Your Mad Bull 34, your Apocalypse Zero, your Dead Leaves, you know, Vampire Wars. That just those sort of intentionally bad anime OVAs from the late 80s, early 90s, that sort of thing. I like that. I think it's it's fun, and this harkens way back to that, um, because it, it sort of reminds me. And so I read this comparison. It's it's like a uh, it's sort of like High School of the Dead in a way, to where it is just intentionally mm. campy and cheesy, and the dialogue is punched up to 11 unlike high school of the dead it doesn't force in any pop culture references that was stephen foster's fault i unironically enjoy that dub but i'm willing to admit it has some major problems with it this one it's sort of like a fosterized dub done right like it takes a lot of liberties but it doesn't um doesn't rely on so many pop culture references and it's able to go over the top without too over the top. And it actually sticks, it's, it stays with the story and that it's given. So uh, I just, I, I love this type of thing. It's just, it's, it's, I would not have watched it in Japanese because I think it, they played it too straight. But here in English, where they're able to loosen it up a bit and just have fun with it and just sort of 
turn it into this cult classic B movie. Um, yeah, I, I, I had a whole lot of fun with it. Would I have spent another 50 bucks on it? Probably not. But um, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't regret. I don't regret backing it. You know, I made fun of the campaign at first because they wanted one hundred eighty dollars for a basic Blu-ray, and I'm like, that's not happening. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and it's not as bad as they were making it out to be. Uh, they were trying to say, you know, it's bug porn, and like it's, it really isn't. There's some few scenes there that are that are pretty gross, but uh, yeah. like the larva scene, obviously. But um, yeah, that's that's where I was like, oh, that's where the porn is. Yeah, but um, and let's be real, like there are, there are far more graphic doujin that are like the <clears throat> that larva scene. Mm -hmm. Right. So I mean, it, if you've watched Elf and Lead, you've already seen worse. So it's not that gross. The manga is a lot. It's toned down a lot from the manga, which is more graphic. But mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I had fun with this. And I really hope that they're able to work things out to where more people can watch the dub uh, because they, at the moment, they don't have any plans to sell the Blu-ray outside the Kickstarter campaign. Mm. So I did the numbers and only around 550 people in the entire world will actually be able to watch this. And we're four of them. And we're four yep. of them, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed this dub. I thought this was, this is a lot of fun. Uh, I can, I, you can tell, like, everyone working on this had a lot of fun making this. Uh, just for the way they talked about it, I, th I feel like the, the, like, the Japanese side, like, are, you know, they're very happy with this dub as well. Um, yeah, it's, like, it's really entertaining, it's very over-the-top and profane, and it feels like it's very suitable to the movie that it's, uh, you know, a dub for. Uh, you know, I had fun. If you know someone who got this, who backed this and got the movie, ask them if you can borrow it and give it a watch. Uh, because... Unfortunately, if you want to watch this currently, as Hardy mentioned, uh, this is so at the moment this is Kickstarter exclusive. If you backed it and got a Blu-ray, you have a copy. Uh, currently, you can watch the Japanese version on Crunchyroll. Uh, if you're really into the kind of movies that like Red Letter Media cover on uh, Best of the Worst, just like in your spare time, I might recommend it. But otherwise, it's like I'm going to be honest. The kind of people who enjoy this movie are probably people who don't watch a lot of anime in the first place and mostly watch like you know Italian horror movies from the '70s and '80s. Which there is an overlap in that Venn diagram, but it's a lot smaller than you know you'd think it is. Uh, so yeah, go go make friends with someone on Twitter, I guess. And ho hopefully they'll throw. I, I I would be surprised if they don't. I don't know if they'll sell the Blu-ray anywhere else. I'd be surprised if they don't put the dub up anywhere over the long term. Uh, I can easily see them like that that Crunchyroll version getting updated with the dub version at some point or something like that. Uh, but you might want to know where you can find us. Uh, we're Dub Talk. Uh, you're probably watching us on either YouTube or a podcast streaming service of your choosing. Thank you. Uh, you can also find us on Twitter and Twitch, where uh, Megan has already started streaming stuff on there somewhat regularly. Yes. And uh, I'm hoping to join her in some capacity once I can kind of get things figured out. Um. I guess we also have, like, an Instagram and a Tumblr. We don't really use those, so you can go look at whenever we last updated them and sigh sadly or something like that. Uh, we also have a Patreon uh, where you can help us uh, do what we do. Uh, and if you donate over a certain amount, you can get your name read out on an episode, which is what I'm going to do now. Thank you to our $5 patrons, Megan's mom and dad, uh, Michelle Travis, Miraculous Corazon, Nico Robin, but with yaoi hands, Sue Twitte, and Victor Maybor Borada. And thank you to our $10 tier, Carly Lestikow, Crimson Echidna, Jacob Wilson, J2, a.k.a. Jared, Julia W., Marissa Lenti, and Otaku Anthony. Thank you all. And uh, where can we all find you guys on the internet? You can follow me at Queener or Two, where I shit post on the regular. You can follow me at Jamstar529, Jamstar1 on YouTube. Ain't, I'm an assistant editor for the podcast. I'm trying to stop my old podcast, making off my lazy ass. And that's all I got. You can find me on Twitter at Spaceman Hardy. You can also find me on the Funimation Discord. Um, I just need to start posting more goat pictures lately. I've just been retweeting Final Fantasy art. And, uh, and yeah, that's basically it. Uh, and I'm Amon. You can find me at Amon Duel US on Twitter. Duel has two U's in it. I talk about movies and comic books and stuff like that. And I also talk about music. 
And I have a dusty old song for you all tonight if you'd enjoy. Is it Hell insect yeah. related? It's not going to be insect related because I couldn't think of any insect specific songs that were totally appropriate. So I went in the other direction. I actually have two because I couldn't decide on which one. In 1958, a movie came out called The Blob. It's got oh, Steve McQueen okay. in it. It's very good. It's in the Criterion Collection. Uh, but if you were to watch The Blob, you will get to the opening credits, and you'll be presented with something surprising. A novelty song about The Blob. What? <laughs> by by a studio group called The Five Blobs, who are not a real band, really. They're just a bunch of studio guys put together. Uh, I mention this in part because it's hysterical and weird, and also because it was written by actual living songwriting god Burt Bacharach. Really? What? With With not his regular lyricist writing partner Hal David, but with Hal David's brother Mac, who's best known for working on a lot of Disney movies like Cinderella and Alice in Wonderland. What? Wow. <laughs> yes. Yes. These are true facts. You can find it on the internet. Go look it up. Uh, but maybe you want something a little more, maybe not serious, but you're not in the mood for something silly. You want something that you can say, get your groove onto on the dance floor. Well, in that case, I have something for you. By another basically fake band called Hot Ice, I present to you the theme from Friday the 13th Part 3, which is in fact a disco song. <laughs> what? Do, do, does it have the ha ha things mixed into it? You bet it does. <laughs> wow. That got it got a twelve inch remix, guys. It's real. I was gonna say I have one more. Go. Uh, dust, so, not a dusty old song, but a song, uh, from uh, everyone's favorite composer that works with a small independent uh, CGI studio called Pixar. <laughs> Is it a Bug's Life? There's a song called "Time of Your Life" by Randy Newman from a Bug's Life. Maybe you should listen <laughs> yeah, to it. Yeah, I figured. Oh boy, man! I should have recommended the monsters, in the monsters Inc. suite when we did Diamond Taller, but you'll you'll have to watch that episode first. Oh, I'm assuming this is coming out after that. So. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be good. Uh, but on that note, thank you all for listening, and you all have a good night. Don't let the bed bugs bite. <laughs> Keep a can of raid next to you. Rock on Boston, rock on Chicago, rock on mysterious little islands somewhere in the Pacific. And for the love of God, let me see the disco stick! <laughs> I got yeah, the I magic stick. I'm a freak to the core. <laughs>